In this Blender tutorial I will show you how to rotate an object that is following a path. Other tutorials can be found in my playlists. Ok well this is a simple model aeroplane and it's quite small in scale as you can see in relation to the camera but it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do, another thing, always make sure you've got this uh, object properties button here this is orange tab selected so you can see your rotations um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just hold down shift followed by A and next to curve I'm going to select a path and though it's quite long I'm going to just press S and make it a bit longer OK then tab to go into edit mode and I'm not going to make this path too complicated I think what I'll do is I'll just box select this end here or you can left click on it then I'm just going to press G and grab it over so I've got a sort of a curve in this direction and then three on my numbers pad and grab this up so that will do I think for this tutorial the one thing you may want to do in older versions of Blender you could see the sort of directional arrows if you can't see the directional arrows because you might if you wanted to say change the animation from instead of going from right uh, left to right you may want to rotate this around but anyway there's a little drop down button here next to overlays if you select this and then place a tick in the box next to the normals you can see the direction of the arrows and like I said if you want to go in a different direction you just need to rotate this path around okay but well that's just a, something that might interest someone okay let's have a look at this so what I would do here is I'm going to just select this vertice here if you just hold your left mouse button down you can sort of do a select here and I'm going to hold down shift followed by S and I'm going to select cursor to selected I'm going to press tab to go into object mode and I'm going to select the object or in this case the aeroplane and again hold down shift followed by S and this time I'm going to go selection to cursor Now clearly this if it's going to move it's going to go along this path in the direction of the X axis now I could if I set this to follow the path now this will just go in a sort of a, a linear movement so what you need to do and this is the reason I've set the um, cursor up to the um, end of the path and also the object to the cursor if you hold down shift followed by A and what you're looking for is next to empty I would select the arrows and they're, they're quite big in this instance because like I said the model is small so I'm going to resize this by, by pressing S and just drag this down in size now an empty only ever rotates on the Z axis really so you need to rotate the Z so that it's in line with the X so I'm going to just press R Y 9 0 and now this Z is going in the same direction as the X this really this is more for sort of um, if you're using a generated spin but I find this is the best way to do it so what I'm going to do now is select the object the aeroplane and I'm going to hold down shift and select the empty and then hold down control followed by P and select object now if I select the empty hold down shift and then select the path and again control P this time I need to select follow path 
And now if I play this, I'll try and get it so that you can get a better view. This jet fighter follows the path, but it doesn't rotate or move in any direction. Another thing you may want to do, by default, anything that moves along the path, you'll only get 100 frames. So the default setting on Blender is 250. So if you select your path, come to the little curve, data, object, data, properties, little curve, select this and then open up by selecting the little arrow, path animation, and you can change the number of frames. So in this instance, I'm gonna put in 250. So now this will move from here to here, across the 250 default setting. So that's obviously slowed it down quite a bit. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Now you need to make sure you've got the object or your aeroplane selected, not the um, empty. And what I do is I just press I at frame one and then just select location and rotation. Then make sure, like I said at the beginning, you need to have this orange box selected object properties and this gives you your rotations here so let's say I want to take the plane to about here and then start rotating it I only want to rotate it on the X axis so next to X it should still say zero there's a little sort of triangular box it says animate property click this and then I'm going to go to the end and try and get the view so you can see what I'm doing as you can see the X is facing in a strange direction but because I put this empty and aligned the Z to it I can rotate the aeroplane on the x-axis independent of the origin axis so let's go to this angle here does that look pretty good I think so I can always change it and again select the little animate properties box now if I go back to the beginning and press play hopefully things should start working and the aeroplanes turn in Let's get a better view of this so you can see what's happening. Worst thing with trying to do this is getting it lined up. That's a bit better. Okay, let's press play. That's looking pretty good, I think. And that's about all there is to it, really. Um, you can put keyframes in at any point. Try and work along X or well, any axis. So if I wanted to rotate on Y, I'd just make sure that the Z is face, Z on the empty is facing the Y. Um, I will do a few more tutorials on rotating and spinning. There are different ways a helicopter can be a bit fiddly but again I might um, do a few tutorials on things like helicopters and whatnot and um, when I do I'll put links in below this tutorial um, and that's about it really uh, nothing more I can say hopefully this helps someone thank you for watching cheers